So what's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, I get a question a lot about why we're using Longhorns as beef cattle. So I'm gonna go through the pros and the cons of Longhorns for beef. So the way that I chose Longhorns was uh, kind of interesting, okay? So we moved here last year, almost a year ago, little, like a couple days over a year ago now. And uh, after a month or so, spring hit and the grass started to grow up so I was like okay I don't want to have to go mow I just want to be able to you know get our farm started you know we're starting a regenerative farm here and uh, and I start looking for cows now uh, first place I looked Craigslist and I'm scrolling through looking at all the different options you have on there you go on Craigslist you type in you know cattle cabs Angus Hereford whatever and you're gonna see tons and tons and tons of cows pop up well seeing all the different prices on them and everything and then I come across to, uh, you know Longhorns and I just out of curiosity I click on the ad that was placed there and what I saw the price made me go okay what I went they're that much because they're pretty cheap Yoli Betty and Daphne transparency purposes I'll tell you right now uh, those are our first three Longhorns and uh, they normally don't go this low but there's a guy selling them for two hundred dollars and I went wait a second so the average calf around here sells anywhere from depending on the market right now it's kinda up and down at the very low end six at the higher end nine you know somewhere in a thousand area uh, so if you have a specialty kind of calf um, heifer heifer calf it goes maybe 15 steers are higher because they bring more money right away if somebody's growing the herd they probably want to start with heifers if they just want beef cattle that they can you know grow out they're looking for steers but these three heifers were two hundred dollars and that made me go okay I'm gonna look into this just for you know just for funsies I go on I start looking up longhorns as beef cattle and there's a lot of positivity and a lot of negativity on both sides. If you ask the typical cattle rancher, you know, oh, you know, I'm doing longhorns for beef, he'll laugh at you. Why? Because that's just not done. It's Because that's just not the way that things are supposed to be. And why is that? Because the way it works is that most, uh, most ranchers are either a cow-calf guy or you're a finishing operation, and that's usually a feedlot. Now, if you're a cow-calf guy, what you do is the way you make your money is you have cows in a bull, or you AI them, and the calves you take at winning age to the sale barn. Now, the producers at the sale barn, if they see horns on the cow, the price drops. Why? They wanna see, preferably, all black, all the same weight, all the same size, that's what they're looking for because they know okay this batch is gonna grow out on this amount of feed in this amount of time they don't want irregularities you know if somebody actually really wanted to they could probably go and go buy a bunch of different groups of cows that are do they, they can go buy groups of cows that are different colors buy them buy like three different groups of black red and white go um, take them back home sort them out to black red and white into the individual groups rather than it be mixed and they could probably just make money like that because that's what the producers are looking for now with that being said why did I go with Longhorns well I'm not playing the sale barn I don't want anything to do with the sale barn we have 30 acres here to try and make money on 30 acres at the sale barn you're just you're just not gonna do it you're not gonna do it at all it's just not gonna be worth it to you if you do things the conventional way to where you know you just turn your cows out you feed them hay in the winter time I mean I don't see how people are really making money there because if you just look at the cost of keeping a cow the cost of keeping a cow is uh, about five bales of hay in the winter time so that's the average each bale of hay runs about forty dollars okay that's two hundred dollars just to keep the cow over winter time then most people feed them cubes some sort of cubes or whatever and that can range it varies person to person depending on how much they want to feed them okay then you have to take into the cost of the the land whether you're buying or renting you have to factor that into the cow the cost of the cow you have to figure in depreciation because as she gets older you know what she's not going to be producing as many calves and she eventually has an expiration date and then you have to take into account you know either you haul them or you have somebody haul them for you that's gas on you sale barn fees and then taxes and then when that all comes out you can probably make on a calf that you sell for you know six seven hundred six seven eight 
$900 on a heifer, you can make maybe a hundred or two dollars. On 30 acres here, we should be able to keep for the stocking density about 10 cows. And then we could turn around and sell, if we say we got all heifer calves, we can roughly make maybe a thousand dollars profit. You know, if it's all bull calves or steers, you can probably double maybe, I don't think you can triple that, probably close to triple, you could probably triple it in profit. I don't see that as a sustainable way to, you know, make a living. I mean, 30 acres, you can make a couple thousand dollars. That's not worth it. It's not worth your time. And then with prices the way they are at the sale barn right now, it's it's just not worth it to you. There's so many people out there complaining. I heard at the co-op the other day when I was buying dog food that, oh, grain prices are up, cattle prices are down. It's the way it is. It's what happens when you play a commodity type market. It's all dependent on the market. It's not really dependent on you. And then on top of it all, with a lot of those uh, commercial breeds, you do have to account for quite a bit of loss. You know, you're gonna have a cow just die. I mean, that's just what happens. You're gonna have, you know, a calf not make it. And if you're losing quite a bit of your calf crop, guess what, your profit just goes down and down and down. It just doesn't make sense. So the way that it made sense for me is that we're gonna go direct to consumer. We're gonna go capture that whole dollar of our beef. You see, if you just go and buy commercial beef at the grocery store, um, you calculate it all out, they sell about a cow for roughly over, a little over $3,000. You take into account the T-bones, the ground, the sirloin, the everything, okay? It's, uh, it comes out to be a little over $3,000. Now, if you do grass-fed, grass-finished, that price jumps. Why? Because it's better for you and there's a lot more work into it. And it takes a lot longer for a cow to finish out. So you have a lot more time, energy, and money into the cow. By finishing out one of our steers, we can make more than the conventional producer would on a whole batch of heifers just off of one steer. Then you can't take into account that we're moving them every day and we're, we're having a lot more grass grow and we're feeding a lot less hay. Then it can actually become sustainable for us to make a living here. But we have to go direct to consumer, but we have to take into account the marketing dollars and marketing time that it's gonna take in order to sell our beef. So now that you have context, let's get down to the pros and cons of the Longhorn. Now, these are $200 and after all the research that I did on them just that night because I stayed up quite a long time I found that they're much more parasite resistant. They're a lot more parasite resistant than any other cow breed really out there Why is that because when the Longhorns originally came here? They're America's oldest cow. They came in they came over on uh, Christopher Columbus's second voyage to the New World, okay? The Spanish tried to keep them and they end up breaking out and you know, they didn't have the fences and the whole setup that we do now because you know, this is almost 500 years ago. So when the Longhorns broke out, they ended up becoming wild cattle. They had to, uh, they didn't look like the way they did now. What happened was the Longhorns, that was bred through genetics. Why? The cows that they brought over did have some horn, but the longer the horn, the more protected they were. And here in Texas, there used to be wolves. There used to be bears. Now we don't have that kind of stuff. And that was the main predator of, you know, the bison or the now Longhorns that escaped. So the longer the horn, the more they could fight. The more they could fight off the, the wolves, the bears, the coyotes even, or whatever. They also had to adapt very quickly to our land. If they couldn't survive on the grasses that, uh, that were grown here, they die. Just kind of natural selection, very Darwinian approach to it. And the end result is now what you see today in a very, very um, parasite resistant, very well adapted to our area cow. And that's because there was lack of human intervention. There was not any kind of breeding program where they're trying to just look for a ton of weight rather than, you know, good genetics. So is the Longhorn actually what Christopher Columbus and his, his crew brought over? No, because when they broke out and they started breeding among themselves and they had to survive for themselves and almost on a very small uh, percentage level, almost a new species. So for a newbie that's never owned cows before, I went, okay, that sounds pretty good to me because I don't want to have to, you know, deal with, you know, worming them. I don't want to have to deal with, you know, issues because I just don't know. I just didn't have any experience with it. And I mean, I could take them to a vet and everything. And obviously that, you know, that could take care of it no matter what the breed. But it's not something that I wanted to do. It's not something that, I, hey, you know, I didn't want to be best friends with the vet. Why? Because that adds up pretty quickly. So that was a big pro on that end. The second thing that I found was that the Longhorn beef is very different than uh, 
than your regular commercial beef. Even grass-fed, you know, Angus, grass-fed Hereford, whatever you, whatever it is, it's different. Why? I don't know exactly why. I think it's because they learned to survive on lower quality forages because they went to, you know, to the desert, West Texas area. Don't know exactly why, it's just the way they are, but they are a lot leaner. Some people might say that's good, some people might say that's bad. I tend to think it's good because you get more, you get more meat per pound rather than fat. So you get more beef and more, it's more nutrient dense than any other beef. You see per pound, it has less calories than even chicken breast. And per pound, it has more grams of protein compared to any other beef. The amount of grams of fat per serving is even less than venison. And the cholesterol in it is way, way, way down. I think the only things that have less cholesterol per serving is rabbit and venison. And there's people out there that are looking for this type of beef. You just have to be able to provide it to them. You see with the Longhorn, the Longhorn will not just provide you, you know, money with the, the meat. But, you know, here we like to use the entire cow. And we're going to use the entire cow. Everything from the bones, we're going to make dog treats out of those, okay? You could do that with any cow. We're gonna use the hides. You can't beat a longhorn hide. I mean, it's the prettiest thing. Doesn't even matter if they're almost all solid color. It's different than every other breed of cow. Look, we have the Charlotte Angus crosses here. We have two of them just that we're experimenting with and they're all white. They're pretty, but it's not the wow factor that some of our other cows have. You know, you look at, you look at the hides that are gonna come off of these. That's something that you display. It's a display piece. It's a piece of a rug. We can take that and maybe partner with somebody and turn that into leather goods. I mean, you could do that with any other cow, but you can keep the, 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 the fur on or the hair, if you want to call it. But the longhorn hide, I mean, it just, it, it, people look at it and just go, wow. And then with some of them, we'll probably end up even doing like a taxidermy of the head because those, the shoulder mounts, they call them. I've been looking into this quite a bit more. Those run a lot, a lot of money. I mean, it's impressive to see some people like it some people don't but there's people out there that are looking for longhorn shoulder mounts so we're going to be doing shoulder mounts of our you know the bigger steers and not only the steers we'll see how the cows come out because you know they have the real cool horns hopefully we're able to do it on all of them because i think that'd be pretty cool it's part of using the whole cow so there's so much the value add on them compared to any other breed because would you want to see a shoulder mount of an angus breed i mean cool but it's not the impressive, you know, the different colors and the horns of the Longhorn. Now, one of the things that I was worried about with the Longhorn when I first started looking at them is obviously the horns, because they can get, you know, they can get pretty massive. And I was thinking that can be kind of dangerous, especially, you know, if you get a bull or you get some, some of them mad at you, whatever. Let me tell you this, Longhorns are the most docile cow docile cattle that you can meet i mean our bull jordan he uh he doesn't let me necessarily rub up on him but i don't have to worry when i'm around him i mean I, I keep a little bit more of a closer eye than i do the other ones but i walk through the herd like nothing these new steers they don't you know bat an eye at me they they move when i walk them around but there's no aggression there you know you see with the longhorn what i think it is i'm pretty sure it is is that they have weapons they have these massive weapons on their head and they know that they can use them they know that they can use them if they really need to so they know okay this guy's gonna come at me and try and do something to me guess what boom and let me tell you something they know how to use those horns I, the first guy that i got the first cows from he had his his special cow and his favorite one he fed him cubes and stuff he would hold up a, a cube you know they're about this big and uh, he'd hold it up to her and uh, she'd know to go and she could use her the tip of her horn to smack the cube right in between his fingers i mean it was it's impressive they know exactly where those things start and where they end so they really know how to use them so i feel like they have a sense of confidence to know okay if something messes with me i'm bigger i'm badder i'm stronger and i got bigger weapons than them i can take them out but this also gives me a sense of security because, okay, say, uh, you know, a pack of stray dogs, okay? Because a pack of stray dogs can, you know, go after a calf or something like that and really hurt it and maybe even a cow, okay? Or we have coyotes or something, okay? Those longhorns, they are because of, their, one, their instincts and two, their horns. 
What they do is a longhorn herd will surround the calves. The moms will surround the calves and the, the bull and the steers, what they'll do is they'll go chase off the coyote because they know how to use it. A lot of the lobo wolves that were in Texas were not only killed by ranchers, but they were killed by longhorns because they'd mess them up. They'd go and, you know, there's even stories, there's a, a couple books about longhorns that I've read and people in there from the 1800s say, you'll see, sometimes you'll see a longhorn um, bull with a coyote hanging off of one of its horns. So with most cows, you don't really have to worry about predators, but with longhorns, you really don't have to worry about them because they will go and mess up whatever comes at them. I mean, there's nothing bigger and badder out here. They're the they're the, the top of the, they're not food chain, I wouldn't say, but there's, even if we have a pig or something, they, they'll be able to fight off a pig with those horns, especially. Now, when it comes to calving, that was one of the issues that I uh, really wanted to look at when looking at a breed, because I don't want to have to be pulling calves. I just had to pull a calf the other day and help my neighbor with it, and it's sad. It's, you know, disappointing. It's just... It's not something that I ever want to do. It's not something that any rancher wants to do. So the wind picked up pretty bad right here. But what I'm talking about is the ease of calving and how it's like one out of every 1,000 longhorns that you actually have to pull or actually have to help give birth, maybe even more than that. And with regular cows, it's, you know, the percentage is actually much, much higher. And that has a lot to do with the weight of the calves being born. Longhorns are a lot smaller than your traditional commercial breed calves. I didn't want to have to be dealing with vets. I didn't want to have to be pulling calves. I didn't want to have all the, the nonsense that comes with, you know, the, the bigger breeds, the more commercial breeds. It's just, I care about the cows too much and it's, I, it, it upset me a little bit having to pull the other calf, um, even though it wasn't mine. When I've gotten attached to these cows, especially the, the first few that we got, and I just don't want anything to happen to them. The other really cool thing about longhorns is they mature a lot faster than uh, other breeds. A longhorn heifer is ready to breed about eight or nine months, and if you have a smaller bull, she'll be able to handle it. It's not really advisable, but she can handle it. With the other commercial breeds, it's you know usually 12, 14 months. And with the longhorns, they also live a lot longer than most cows. If I was starting out again, I would not feel uncomfortable buying a teenage longhorn because I knew I could still get quite a few calves out of her. Longhorns have been known to breed well into their teens and even early 20s. What that means is more calves, less issues, they live longer, and more calves mean more money. And so taking that all into consideration, they might seem like the absolute perfect cow. Well, here's a couple of the cons. Here's a couple of the cons. Number one, they take a little bit longer to finish out. They don't grow well on, you know, on typical cattle feed. They don't, they don't grow well on it which is, in my opinion, a good thing. I wouldn't see that as a negative. But even on grass, they take longer to grow out than the commercial breeds. Uh, when you're doing a grass-fed, grass-finished, it takes, it takes about two years to finish a commercial breed uh, steer out. Uh, with longhorns, it's usually 26, 28 months. Is that a bad thing? Hey, they get to live a little bit longer. Um, it takes a little bit more to get money out of them. But I don't see that be, as being a huge issue. It might be for some people. And then secondly, and the, probably the biggest issue with longhorns is there's going to be cows that fall out of the herd. There's going to be coal cows, there's going to be coal heifers, there's going to be just cows that you just, they drop weight, they, they're not performing like, you know, you, you, they should. And for the most part, most longhorns do perform like they should because, again, the genetics. But what happens when they don't? Now, if you try and take that cow to the sale barn, you're not going to have a good time you're not gonna have a good time, especially right now. You take a commercial breed coal cow and a longhorn coal cow, it's gonna be a big difference in price. Like I said earlier, as soon as the, the buyers see the horns in the sale barn, they want nothing to do with her. Now, is there ways around that? I mean, you can try and put some weight on her, take her off of uh, the bull, don't let her breed back. Um, I don't know what the solution would be to that if you need to do a coal, because if, if she's dropping weight, you, it might not be worth it for you to, you know, take her to the processor because there might not be much meat there. So, I mean, you could just let her live, uh, let that cow live her life out, um, which we might do. You might try and, uh, you know, separate it out, give it better grass, uh, maybe pump some uh, alfalfa pellets into it, see if you can 
help but start putting some weight on but if you have a cold cow you don't want that to keep breeding into your herd so that's probably the biggest problem when it comes to longhorns is what do you do with the coals because you're not going to get your money I mean, you can probably get your money what you paid for her out of out of her at the sale barn but the last with one of the last people i talked to that took a longhorn to the sale barn got 42 cents a pound which that doesn't really add up and you want to take that money that you get from uh your coal cows and just be able to buy new cows. Now, could you go backwards there? I don't know. You, you mean, with the prices of longhorns they are, you might be able to break even, but you probably would have to start from a heifer. You probably just couldn't add in a new cow. Um, so that's one of the big drawbacks to the longhorns. I don't necessarily foresee it being a huge issue. It might be a small issue, but even with those cons, if you want to call them that, we still went with the longhorn i love the breed i love the the cows they are easy they're great i mean the longhorn steers right here they're laying down maybe uh 30 feet away from me now and we've only had them less than a day and i just for me i just feel comfortable around them also one other thing too check this out uh, i've been looking into this some people actually use longhorn steers as guardian animals for like their sheep because they have the horns and because they are more uh they don't like you know coyotes and stuff more than the other cows they'll actually go after one and chase them off rather than you know like some cows they might run and there's some people that are actually having quite quite a bit of success using longhorn steers as guardian animals that way they don't have to get dogs or we have the llamas here that we're going to get for alpacas or a donkey or something like that and a longhorn steer use it as pasture art multi-use uh, maybe butcher it when you get a new steer coming up and it will take care of your, your sheep herd. Not 100% on that, not 100% on that, but that's a, a pretty interesting um, way to use the longhorns. So those are some pros and cons of uh, the longhorns. There's a lot less barrier to entry. It's easier to get into. They're easier to handle. And that's why we went with them. They're, they're just a really good, good cow. They're just different and I like that different. And on top of it all, we're in Texas and everybody knows what a longhorn is in Texas, you know. So, so I hope that gives you guys some perspective on whether or not you want to go with uh, longhorns for your beef cattle operation or not. There's always a lot to consider when choosing breeds, but I'll tell you this, I love the longhorns. And with that, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, alright? Until next time, see ya.